An introduction to combinations. How are these two scenarios different? In part A, the first situation, in how many ways could Elena, Barbara, Carl, Dominic, and Edward be chosen for president, vice president, and secretary? So in the first case, the order of which you choose these people matters. And if the order matters, we have a permutation. So we have five people from which to pick a president, vice president, and secretary. To pick a president, we would have five people to choose from. And then when we pick our vice president, we would only have four from which to choose from because we've already used one up with the president. And the same case would be for the secretary. So it's permutations. Five times four times three would be 60 possible ways. In letter B, it's slightly different. In how many ways could these same five people form a committee with three members? And we're actually going to list the ways just to demonstrate how these are different. And I'll just label them A, B, C. So we've got five people, A, B, C, D, and E. So from those five people, how many ways can we form a committee? Again, I'm just going to list them. So it's A, B, C, A, B, D, A, B, E, A, C, D. This gets a little tedious after a while. A, D, E. I'm doing all the various combinations of three people to form the committee. Sorry, that's supposed to be a C. And there I've got it. So once I list them all out, I have 10 ways. So the difference when permutations are used, it's 60 ways. When we're selecting groups of three or combinations, there are only 10 ways in which to do that. So what's the actual difference? Well, it's a factor of six. You can choose um, your principal, sorry, your president, vice president, secretary, 60 ways versus 10 ways to select a committee of three. So it's a factor of six. So when we're looking at combinations, the concept of combinations, now knowing the difference, the number of combinations equals the number of permutations divided by the number of permutations selected. Okay. Let me go back just a little bit here. Again, this difference between 60 and 10 is 6, but 6 is equal to 3 factorial. We're going to use that piece of information right now. So the difference is a factor of 6 or 3 factorial. So going back to the number of combinations, instead of using NPR for perms, we're going to use the notation NCR to denote combinations. And that, as I've just set up here, is permutations, which is the aforementioned NPR, divided by R factorial. Again, I'm going to scooch back here. Again, the difference between 60 and 10 is that R factorial, the number of perms selected. So just to further explain the combination formula, this will translate into the permutation formula, which is N factorial over N minus R factorial. So that is the permutation formula right there. Okay. Now let's deal with changing it so that it is actually the combination formula 
by adding R factorial underneath. And now we have the combination formula. I'm going to tidy it up. So this becomes n factorial, n minus r factorial. If I'm dividing the whole thing by r factorial, I'm going to flip and multiply. So I'm going to use the reciprocal, because it is a fraction. Flip and multiply. And then when I'm done, this will become n factorial, n minus r, all factorial, r factorial. And that's it. That is the combination formula. And it's derived from any case that looks like that, where the difference is between a permutation and a combination. So now let's use the formula. So the formula is NCR which translates into the perm formula over r factorial, which when you write it out completely, becomes what we just derived on the previous slide. So to use it in a case, how many different sampler dishes with three different flavors could you get at an ice cream shop with 31 different flavors? So you have 31 from which to choose from, and you are going to choose three of them. So 31 choose three, and that will turn into 31 factorial over 31 minus three factorial, three factorial. And when you simplify that, it becomes 28 factorial, three factorial. Notice that 28 plus 3 adds up to 31. And when all is said and done, that magical number is 44.95. Let's use the formula again. Each player in a bridge game reserves a hand of 13 cards dealt from a standard deck. How many different bridge hands are possible? Now we're at the stage where we're using NCR and we have a group of 52 from which we are choosing 13. You can now use your calculator button uh, function button whatever you want to call it and it is the NCR button from which you will input the N and then the R. So if you input 52, choose 13, you will get approximately 635 billion possible bridge hands. Last problem. Using the formula once again. Ursula runs a small landscaping business. She has on hand 12 kinds of rose bushes. 16 kinds of small shrubs, 11 kinds of evergreen seedlings, and 18 kinds of flowering lilies. So the question becomes, in how many ways can Ursula fill an order if a customer wants, in case number one, 15 different varieties consisting of four roses, three shrubs, two evergreens, and two lilies? I like to list in short form uh, what it is I'm dealing with. So rose bushes, I've got 12, the shrubs, 16, the evergreens, 11, and the flowering lilies, 18. So I want 15 different varieties, total 14, 3, 2, and 6. So the solution to part A, or customer one, would be 12 rose bushes from which we are choosing four. And, so it's multiplication, we want three of the small shrubs from 16. And we want two of the evergreens from 11. 
And from a group of 18 flowering lilies, we want six of those. So once you plug this into your calculator, you will get 2.8302674444 times 10 to the 11. In part B, we want either four different roses or six different lilies. So in this case, we're choosing from a group of 12, we're choosing four of those, or becomes addition. From a group of 18, we are choosing six. You add those up and it's 19059. Hope that was useful. Thanks for listening.